you know, obviously game one, we accomplished the mission of what we wanted to do. I just told the team that. We went into game one and oh, we didn't have a score expectation and we got the job done. And then at the end, I made them raise their hand for if they were the first time ever playing for the Cougs. And it's amazing, it's over half of that locker room. Okay, so next week, guess what? No one can raise their hand like that because everyone's already played for the Cougs. It's part of our team. Uh, there's going to be a lot of learns from this tape. I'm excited to get a chance to get to watch it um, because we need to be a better team come week two when we're week one, and, and we need to continue that throughout the season. So we'll open that up through, uh, for any questions. Coach, obviously, um, it seemed that the first drive may be a bit of a struggle, but then after that, the offense was pretty inflappable. Uh, you know, you get, se you get to 70 points. Yeah. What did you see out of them that kind of, I mean, that's the most points Wazoo has scored since 1997. We ran the ball. You know, and when you can run the ball, it's going to open up lanes for the RPO game. We didn't even get much to the play action pass game today, uh, but I thought John did a really good job of settling in. I, you know, you get the first three and out, it's not what, the way you want to open the season, but I, I'm glad we had to respond to adversity, and I thought the offensive guys did a tremendous job. I mean, everyone ate today. I mean, you saw skill sets across the board that we've been talking about. It's been great to finally see it really applied to the field. So I thought a run after the catch today was phenomenal. And we're going to need that as we continue to go throughout this season. Obviously, I think one of the standouts today was, was Way Sean. You get two of those yeah. just really explosive touches. Uh, obviously, kind of wanted your thoughts on him, but then also the offensive line kept John upright the entire game. There was, I think, just one or two negative plays. Seemed like maybe their best game in a couple of years. Yeah, I think we dominated that that side of the ball at the line of scrimmage. You know, wish uh, you know on the flip side had been better at the defensive line. But if we can keep John upright, he can get the ball out on time and on rhythm. And when the play breaks down, you saw what he can do with his feet. I thought Way Sean was just phenomenal, you know. And you you think you have this talent, and it's good to see it get there. And he's going to stay humble and hungry and keep working. But really proud of all of those backs. I mean, Leo hit a couple. Um, Javinsky hit one. DP's always consistent, so you can't do that without the big guys up front. And I thought they were phenomenal. John, uh, in some spots, was happy to let his receivers kind of make plays. Didn't want to press. Too much. I know Trey took one to the house from I and mean, then you know, obviously Kyle. Is that like an emphasis at all? Is kind of letting playmakers kind of make you know plays on their own? Well, I think it's our style of offense. You know, to get the ball out on time and on rhythm. And when you do that, you allow these guys space to go out there and make plays. You know, we did feel coming into the game that you know we could rack the football after we caught it, and it's good to see that get applied. But more importantly, I saw Kyle Williams 25, 30 yards down the field blocking on Wayshawn's big run. I, I saw a bunch of other guys really giving great efforts to spring their teammates. And those are the things that we'll really highlight on Monday because that's, that's got to continue. Uh, Giving up 30 to uh, Portland State, is there any you know, concern about that? I mean, as a defensive guy, anytime a, a three hits the board, you know, you're never too happy. Like I said, I. I didn't think, I thought they dictated to us today, you know, and I think they got a bunch of different schemes. They got options, they got unbalanced, they got motions, um, but I don't think we were aggressive enough at the line of scrimmage, and it'll always start there. So we got to get better from this tape. We do. Um, there's some communication issues, there's tackling issues. Um, so, you know, that, that I, here's what I know about that squad. They're going to come back to practice with their hair on fire and ready to go. Um, so, you know, we'll see where, they, where we're at next week. Jake, uh, you obviously winning matters, but you know well as, any, as as well as anyone that perception matters too. How important was not only to win, but win like that? There was no expectation to win in any sort of capacity. I really mean that. You know, we went in knowing that we had a distinct advantage at many positions, um, and I thought our guys executed really well. Is that what you kind of pictured the wide receiver group to look like when you got these guys together? Yeah, I mean when you when you put them when you put it all together, sometimes you never know what you have and. You know, to have them see him go out there and play clean football and catch it and respond and kind of feed off each other's energy and, you know, Chris Hudson taking a sweep for 80 yards. I mean, just shows the dynamics that these guys can be, you know, and it'll get harder as we keep going. But at the end of the day, this is a good first step in our journey and, and excited about those guys feeling really positive headed in the next week. You always talk about mentality for these guys. How important is it to be able to win, be able to celebrate as much as they did today and start off on the right foot? Yeah, I told them you celebrate all wins. I've been doing this long enough to know, you know, you never know when the next one's coming. So you got to make sure every step of your journey, when you go 1-0, and like let's, there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. Now we know where this football team's at. You know, as a coaching staff, you're always wondering, you know, what's, what's your team going to look like? Now we have a baseline, and we just got to keep – you know, growing and getting better and just keep progressing as it goes throughout this season. So this definitely can't be the peak. 
you know, we got to come to work on Monday ready to get better. And, and I think we got the attitude of this football team to come and do it. Uh, first drive, three and out, but you know, Matier has an overthrow, but then, you know, eight straight touchdown drives after that. Was there a, any conversation with John after the first drive, and how was his confidence, and how did you see him, you know, lock in? Yeah, it's it's hard to shake John. It really is, and I know it's early in the football season, but really good to see him bounce back, take a hit, get back up. I mean, that's John Matier football. It is. So you, I think you saw it on full display, what he's capable of doing. Um, he'll probably be nitpicky about his performance and, and want to be better, and that's what I love about John. Uh, so, you know, credit to the offense, credit to John. I mean, credit to Coach Arbuckle and our staff. You know, I thought they did a tremendous job today. Defensive line wanting to see more. What, what do they need to do uh, throughout the season to match Just physicality. You know, I, I thought we could be a lot more disruptive going into this game. And, you know, then the second level fits and the third level coverage. You know, love to see some of the, you know, the coverage. Just, you know, go, go get it. Really good job by Steve on the pick six. Um, so, you know, we needed that play at that time, you know, but there's, you know, 400 plus yards of offense, you know, isn't going to get it done a lot of weeks. So we got to learn and grow. And that's going to be the message, you know, that these guys need to hear. Uh, Coach, you were talking throughout the week about how this team has a lot of depth, but also some inexperience. I was just wondering, you obviously get a chance today to see the majority of the guys you'll play um, throughout the season. What do you kind of think of that depth after today? We got to watch it a little bit with a closer eye, but you know you can see some nerves. You see a lot of newness out there a little bit at times, and you know, like I said, we got to wipe that away. You know, because we got big time ball games every week for the rest of the season. Those guys are now seasoned football players. They're cougs, and they have the right mindset and attitude to go, you know, out there and get better. And we can we can play better, especially on defense. So, like I said, it's it's an exciting first step. We we now know where we're at, and <clears throat> we're going to attack the process, keep going forward. At the inside linebacker position, it felt like you were able to mostly rotate through most of the guys on the depth chart, even in the more meaningful minutes in the first half. And it seemed like everybody kind of got to make at least one play. What did you sort of see from that group? Well, I think KT is the leader of that linebacker group. Um, you know, he's going to be the one leading those guys. But Wes got in. I know KB got in. You know, that was kind of the plan to make sure we're keeping guys fresh. Obviously, the heat and the over the course of the game and the snap volume. So. Um, it was just keeping those guys rotating through, and you know we'll see who continues to rise. You know because we got a competitive group with a lot of depth. I mean, but guys got to perform, and you know roles will be adjusted based on their performance. What else do you have, Coach? Uh, Twenty-four ORs on the first uh, depth chart. How many of those positions did you feel like um, you can kind of establish more of like a pecking order at you know, those spots? Probably none. You know, I mean, we got to really see how it goes. I mean, we'll, once again, they all deserve to be on there because they all play and they play a lot. So um, we'll kind of see what the tape says a little bit. You know, I think hopefully maybe running back will sort itself out. It's hard to rep four guys. It is. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we're going to keep that like that for a long time until guys really sort out where, where they're supposed to be. Were you uh, informed that Stephen Hall's pick six was a program record? I did not. 100 I, yards. I did not. That, that's it, huh? We haven't had anything deeper than 100 yards? 98 Will Dirty. Okay. Uh, and then Nick's uh, back just lock up on him again. Just notice, obviously, Dean was doing the punting. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, early this week, I mean, it's a tough deal. And big credit to Dean to come out there and really handle both situations. So we hope to have Nick back next week. Uh, won't guarantee that, but hopefully updates you kind of as the week goes on. Last one. One more. Just uh, your, your thoughts on Hudson's diving touchdown grab. Oh, man. What I mean, especially after the way it kind of started to have a play like that, to jumpstart really the game and the offense and the crowd. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out to the crowd, too. I'm just really appreciative of everyone that showed up today cheering and investing in our football team. Um, expect, you know, big things next week, obviously, as, as we continue throughout our journey. But, you know, Chris, I give Chris a lot of credit. I told him that. You know, he was kind of left by the wayside last year, you know, and he's kind of just matured and reimagined what he what he could do and I think he's everything since he's been here he's just been amazing so proud of that kid just kind of shows once again it's never too late to change you know so I, I love what Chris Hudson has brought to our team and, and that's just a glimpse of what he's capable of doing all right guys go Cougs. Go, 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 go.